Hello, Next Lab users. The time has finally come for us to roll out our upgraded satellite and radar products. As you may recall, earlier this year we made upgrades to our model products that were spurred by changing our animation scripts for looping. And with that upgrade came a number of other improvements. And this upgrade to our satellite and radar products will arrive in much the same fashion. With that said, there's a lot to cover in this video, so let's dive right on in. So the first change you will likely notice is that all of our sector selection maps for all of our satellite and radar products have been changed so that on the main page you now have live data as a background. This should help aid in choosing an appropriate sector for your purposes. And in much the same way we have it on our NextRad products, you can switch between different satellite products or composite radar. We've also added dynamic region highlights for all of our products, which when coupled with the live data as a background should also aid in choosing an appropriate sector. Once you have chosen an appropriate sector, the first thing you're going to notice is that there is a lot of new content at the bottom of the page. First and foremost, the feature that we've added is the animation slider bar to the bottom of the page so that this page is no longer just a static image when it first loads up. It is a set of images that can animate very quickly. Below that, you will see that we have a number of checkboxes for mesoanalysis overlays. These products traditionally have been locked up in a completely separate version of the page, but have now been brought to the foreground, and in addition, have been allowed to animate. Any number and any combination of these overlays can be turned on at any given time. However, as you can see, at a certain point, it does become quite cluttered and almost unusable. So we've added an uncheck all button to wipe the slate clean and allow you to reselect more appropriate products. You will also notice that some of the mesoanalysis overlays are highlighted. The reason these products are highlighted relates to a new feature that's been added, which has to do with data consumption for this page. What they literally mean is that these five products that you see selected right now are preloaded on page load, which means that the data has been cached by your browser. All the other products will only be downloaded by your browser when you choose to display them. The set that you see selected right now are our default selections of pressure falls, station plots, moisture divergence, data E, and watches and warnings. Again, for data consumption purposes, at least on this setting, we have limited the amount of preloading to only five products, but you can reconfigure them to any five products or fewer than five products or none at all. All you have to do is hold shift and click on the labels to turn on or off the preloading for that product. So since we've been discussing this data mode feature and data consumption, let's go ahead and look at how we configure that new feature. The settings for this new feature can be found in the product menu under data mode with three settings of light, moderate, and heavy with moderate being chosen as default. If you need detailed information about what each one of these settings mean, you can click this What's This link, which will be a description of the data mode feature. You can read this at your own leisure. However, I can give you a brief rundown of exactly what's happening when you change this setting. Whenever you make changes to data mode, it will be important to remember the page in terms of two groups of data. You have your satellite and radar data, the main data which occurs in the data frame itself, and then you have the mesoanalysis overlays. To improve page performance, we often preload these images so that the page will operate as we intend. So in moderate data mode, we preload all of the satellite and radar images that were requested, and then only the highlighted overlays. The light data mode operates in much the same way that these pages have worked for many years by only loading the current image, leaving every other frame of data to load only when requested. And finally, the heavy data mode is essentially loading everything on page load. It's loading all of your satellite and radar data, as well as all of the overlays. So when choosing a setting for data mode, there will be a lot of things for you to consider. The three most likely that will play into your decision will be the speed of your internet, the stability, and whether or not you are operating under a limited data plan. If you ever have concerns about the amount of data that's being downloaded by the page, it is important to remember that this setting alone does not determine everything that's being downloaded and how much of it. What will also play into this is the size of your data set, how often the page is set to refresh, and in a more understated way, the slider type can play into this as well. Beginning with data size, obviously if you choose a smaller number of frames, you will be loading a smaller amount of data, while each increase in the data set effectively doubles the amount of data that's being downloaded. Our page refresh setting defaults to 10 minutes and also includes a new timer that will appear down here in the lower right. And you can adjust this to as much as 30 minutes if you have concerns about how often the page is, is left running on idle. In addition, if you have concerns about losing internet connection between page refreshes, you may want to turn the page refresh rate off altogether. And you'll be notified that the auto refresh has been disabled. And the page will sit idle until you refresh it manually. And finally, the not so obvious setting that will play into data consumption is the slider type. 
By default, our slider type is rollover, and this is what people are traditionally familiar with, where as the cursor moves into the slider bar, the slider is automatically moved to that position and will move with the cursor as it pans from left to right. However, what this also means is that if you accidentally move your cursor through the slider bar, you will load new data. So if you have concerns about data consumption or keeping a specific frame loaded, you may want to switch the draggable slider type. What this will mean is the cursor is allowed to pass through the slider bar without the slider moving. Instead, to animate, you now need to click and drag the slider from left to right, and it will animate the images. What this also means is that while animating with the slider in draggable mode, you can move the cursor outside of the slider bar anywhere on the page, and the image will continue to animate. Whereas conversely, with a rollover setting, the animation only occurs while the cursor is inside the slider bar. If the cursor ever falls outside of the slider bar, you will see the image stops animating. The last new setting added to the product menu is listed as dimmer settings down at the bottom of the product menu. This is mainly a cosmetic feature that will allow you to focus more of your attention toward either the overlay data or the product data itself. For example, if we go ahead and dim the overlay data, you'll notice that the overlays are still being displayed. However, they are considerably more transparent, allowing the visible satellite data to come through and be more understandable. Conversely, you can bring the dimmer setting for overlays all the way back up to 100% and then dim the product itself, which would draw much more attention to the overlay data itself rather than the satellite data. With all of these new settings and features, you may find yourself with a particular frame that has your interest and you will want to save it locally. Well, we've added several ways of doing this. First and foremost, if you want to save a single image, all you have to do is right click the image itself and click Save Frame. This will automatically generate and save that frame of data locally to your machine with all of the included products and settings. You can see that when we open this image locally, it has the overlays that we selected at the appropriate dimmer setting. So essentially, the Save Frame feature is exactly what you would think it is. Whatever you are seeing in this frame right here, you will be able to save with one click. If you are after more than just a static image, you can save this entire data set again with all of these settings as an animated GIF. All you have to do is click this Save button down here and click Animated GIF. This will again generate the animated GIF and save it locally to your machine. When you open it locally, you will see an animation of all of the data that was available on the page. And similar to our model products, we are also intending to add a feature that will allow our users to not only download the data that's being displayed on the page, but also the data that's not being displayed. This is done with a feature that we refer to as a HANA save, where the entire data set, including all of the overlays, will be compressed into a zip file and saved locally to your machine with an HTML file that can be opened and allow you to configure the data in much the same way you would find on the site. However, regrettably, there are some issues with this feature with our satellite and radar products, and this feature will not be available on launch, but we intend to resolve those issues and have it up and running as soon as possible. If you have no desire to save the data locally, but would like to send a live link to someone else, you can click the link button down here in the lower right, and this will provide a link that you can send anywhere to anyone and will automatically load the data that you are currently viewing. In addition, this link feature could be used to create a bookmark to a specific product with specific settings that you desire. And finally, the most important thing that we've changed about our satellite and radar pages is the animation software that we are using to run our loops. You can load these animations in a couple of different ways. You can either quickly just press loop down here in the lower right or enter the product menu and click any of the animate links below the size of the data set that you wish to choose. This will load a HANIS animation, which uses HTML5 and JavaScript to animate all the images, and does not require a working Flash plugin. You may also notice that I started this loop with the overlays checked, and those overlays remained checked on this loop. This is also a new feature that we've attempted to implement across the board. If you change any of these overlays to different products, and then change to a different sector, it will load an animation and load all of the overlays that you had checked from the previous sector. If you choose to stop the animation, those overlays will still remain checked. If you switch to different products, they will stay checked as well. So as you can imagine, we've done what we can to make sure that the data you wish to display will always be displayed. Nowhere is this most important than with the auto refresh feature. So when the timer ticks down and reloads the page, it will reload the page exactly in the state that you had it before. The other great thing about HANAS is that it opens up a number of great features that are exclusively available in HANAS. Most important to note will be when you switch to infrared or water vapor products, there will be an enhancement feature added to HANAS, which will allow you to choose different color enhancements for those products.
To track storm motion and get a sense of where a storm will be and when, you can use the extrapolate feature within Hannes. All you have to do is simply identify a cell at the start of the animation, and then identify it at the end of the animation, and it will give you a linear extrapolation of times showing you where that cell would be expected to be and when. There's also the Hannes distance feature, which allows you to approximate the size of certain features in the product or how far a specific feature has gone. And finally, we've taken the same amount of consideration when it comes to the mobile version of this page. In fact, all of the same features that are available on the desktop version of the page are available on the mobile. You have your slider bar, you have all the mesoanalysis overlays that can, can be checked and unchecked, you have the different data modes, you can configure your refresh setting to any one of the same intervals or turn it off. And down here on the bottom, you have easy controls for starting a loop or switching back to the slider. You can also save animated GIFs, or by clicking this icon down in the lower left, you can save an individual frame. You can also use the link feature and open a link that is appropriate to send someone directly to this product. And if at any point you want to switch to different products, all you have to do is scroll to the bottom and hit the home button. So that will do it for this video. I hope you guys are excited about the new features and changes that we've made. It is worth mentioning that most of everything that I've just gone through in this video is available on the 1km, 2km regional and hemispheric products. The next rad data will continue to remain in its current form. However, we are implementing the new animation software to help improve performances on mobile devices. That should cover everything we have to offer at this time. We'd like to encourage you to go ahead and start using these new features at weather.cud.edu slash satrad or satrad.